Hey guys, MCU Collector here with a new figure review, and this one will be the only Star Wars figure that I review from this newest wave. This is the Mandalorian. Uh, this is the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series wave. I'm not even sure. I just know that this is wave one um, of 2020. I don't even know how it works, to be honest with you. This is the mixed up case that has both or all three for the Triple Force Friday, so representing the Mandalorian, uh, Episode 9, Rise of Skywalker, and then Jedi Fallen Order, the video game. Um, so there's two figures based on the game, one figure based on the Mandalorian, which leaves five other figures based on Episode 9. So Offworld Jawa, uh, the Sith Trooper, First Order Stormtrooper, Rey and Dio, Kylo Ren, and then here we have the Mandalorian, and to round it out is the Second Sister Inquisitor and the Cal Kestis. But here we have the Mandalorian. Again, this is the only figure that I'm going to review from the wave. So pretty cool. We get this silhouette look um, of the Mandalorian there, and interesting. We don't know what he's going to be called in the in the TV show other than the Mandalorian, because that's literally all it says for his name down there. So, interesting. I can't wait for that on Disney Plus, November 12th. I already have it on pre-order. You can see he is number 94 in the Black Series set. Here is the back of the package, the side of the package. Um, UPC, which I don't think is going to do anybody any good. But, you know, maybe. Uh, but anyway, there is a bio. Let's check out that bio. The Mandalorian. His body is shielded by Beskar armor. His face is hidden behind a T-visored mask, and his past is wrapped in mystery. The Mandalorian is battle-worn and tight-lipped, a formidable bounty hunter in an increasingly dangerous galaxy. So that's actually a very good bio. It doesn't tell us a whole lot about the character other than, you know, some different things, but, you know... It's just kind of how he looks, right? But um, I think all the Mandalorians kind of have the similar armor. So Boba Fett, uh, Sabine, um, and the Mandalorian. I guess you can consider Django. I guess so. Um, I will kind of compare him to uh, Boba, but I only have the vintage Boba here. So I'll do a little bit of a comparison, I guess, but not really a whole lot because I'm not going to be taking Boba out of the package. Uh, but Mandalorian, of course, I will be taking out of the package and I'll just kind of show them side by side. From what um, I can see quickly, doesn't look like any of the pieces are going to be reused. So it's going to be all new sculpt and everything as far as I could tell, but we'll take a closer look as we open up this package. So let's get to that right now. Okay, and here is the Mandalorian figure out of the package. You know what, he looks really good. There's a couple of nitpick things that I don't like about this figure. And then um, there's some crazy strange things going on with this figure. So as we look at the articulation, you'll understand what I mean by that because there are some things that uh, you were not let me rephrase that. I'm not used to when it comes to Hasbro figures. So maybe this is something that Star Wars figures have been doing. Again, I really don't collect Star Wars now. I have all the Bounty Hunters. I have all the 40th Anniversary figures. Um, I have the Boba from San Diego Comic Con. I have the Celebration um, Darth Maul and Obi-Wan. So the only figure on the vintage style card back... Um, would be the Celebration Luke. So I do have some Star Wars, but I'm really not much of a collector. I don't consider myself one. Um, so maybe it's new to me, but there's some interesting things going on. But um, he is a really cool figure. So let's take a closer look at him, then we'll look at the two accessories that he comes with, um, and then we'll take a look at his articulation. Okay, so here is a closer look, um, zoomed in look at the Mandalorian. So this thing looks really awesome. I really like kind of the battle damage, the worn out look that he has on his helmet. We get a lot of little airbrushing uh, paint in there, some copper color to kind of show some rust signs throughout the helmet. So I really like the way that looks. Nice little details in there. The T-visor looks good. So the black paint um, that they use came out pretty clean. You know, he's got this piece here, which reminds me of like a, sh a Scarif Trooper. So I don't, I mean, similar colors. I don't know if he like steals armor or anything like that. Um, we got some battle damage, it looks like some bullet holes type things, or blast hole or whatever. We even get some on that shoulder piece there, so they added a little silver paint to show that blast effect. Some additional silver paint in there hitting, you know, the armor piece and kind of scuffing it up. We get that through there a lot on the shoulder here um, as well. And then little things like even on the gauntlet piece, we get a little bit right there on the end. So that's pretty cool, the back of that shoulder piece. Um, on this gauntlet, we get a little bit here and there as well. So it's kind of nice touches that they add um, through the figure to kind of show that battle 
that battle damage to him. Now the padding on the legs, we get the same thing on the thighs throughout. That's pretty cool. Additional ammo there on his shin. At least I assume that's ammo. It's interesting. We got a little pouch there. Some funky looking knee pads. Then down to his boots. Now what my biggest nitpick on this on this thing is why are the boots or the feet different color from the boot? Like that looks weird, right? Not just me. Like shouldn't these be the same color? But again, that's a real nitpick because it's just the feet. Um, but it seems odd to me. Um, but you know, I don't know. Maybe it's an armor piece, and then this little ball portion should be the same color of the shoe, and that's just something Hasbro didn't do. Because I mean, you could see a clear difference from where this portion of the boot or guard or armor piece kind of comes up. So you'd think this ball portion would be the same color as uh, the feet, but that's something that, you know, was not done. Uh, there's no battle damage on the back of the figure at all, but we do get some sculpted pieces into that armor and things like that. But not a whole lot of paint or anything going on back there. Blue triangle on the hands, those come out clean. So the paint apps that they use are pretty good. They're, again, there's not a whole lot because a lot of it is just going to be the sculpted plastic color. So, you know, like gray for the pants, brown for this torso piece, then light brown, tan for the upper torso piece, and then he has the armor. So pretty cool. So now let's look at his, uh, his accessories. So he comes with two uh, guns. We'll take a look at those now. So here, this one stores in the back. So you can actually see it has the peg there. And then the shoulder strap actually has a hole, and then there's the peg on the back of the shoulder. So you can actually port it in there. Although it was a little bit tricky, so it doesn't go straight. You have to make sure it's at the angle. And then you really kind of had to force it in. I guess I kind of loosened it up because I got it in there no problem this time around. But before, it was a little bit trickier. So then, so he can store it, so that's cool. The other weapon holster is right here on his right hip, and he does come with a working holster that you can kind of button and port right down in there. And then the blaster just fits in nicely. So here's the blaster that he comes with. Uh, black handle and then just kind of a gunmetal color for the weapon itself. So it's at least it's not just like the dull plastic gray or anything like that. It actually does look really good. It is a different weapon from what Boba Fett comes with. I don't know about Django or anything like that. But um, that's how it looks and I think it looks pretty good. Here he has this long rifle blaster thing. I'm sure we're going to get a name for it in the TV series. Um, as for now, I don't know what it's called. We just get this brown handle here. Then this portion of the gun is that same gunmetal color that the hand blaster is. And then the scope um, and barrel are done in a kind of a dark gray plastic. So it doesn't look like paint. It looks like maybe that's the color that the weapon was and everything else on here is paint. I could be wrong on that. And then this tip, whatever this is, um, not sure is painted in a silver color. So there is his weapon. And the sculpting of it looks pretty good because something so small, you get some nice sculpted details kind of in there. So came out looking really good. Okay, let's look at his articulation now. Okay, so bear with me. These Star Wars figures are a little bit newer. Okay, so what the thing that I was talking about earlier that was kind of weird is, you know, the head motion. You get a lot of fluid motion um, in this head. And I was thinking, wow, that's pretty cool. I wonder how they did it. And that's because, and it's hard to tell because of the stupid cape thing that's here. Let me see if I can pop this helmet off. And it doesn't want to come off. I'm sure there's a way. I don't want to force it too much. But if you look up underneath here that's actually like the ball joint of it so that's where it's moving and around inside of that neck you can see it moving inside there so that I, as far as I know that's something new that Hasbro's doing and I can't I can't pop that head off so I don't know if it comes off or if I would really need to heat it up it's hard to tell by the look of it in there, but that's where the neck is. So the neck itself is moving around. And then it also, I do get some swivel independent of that joint in there. So the swivel is in there. So the head must be able to come off, but you, that's where you get the, you get the motion from. So there's no, there's no hinge in there. Cause I'm trying to get it to go down like a secondary motion and there's not. So he can look up that high. He can look down that much, but again, you get that, you know, 
a fluid range of motion in there. Shoulders come up this high on this end, so this shoulder pad moves up onto the shoulder so it's not gonna hinder the articulation um, at all. The strap kind of goes around and actually into the shoulder, and it's actually part of it. Let me see. You can kind of have to dig it out and came out. This one, you're gonna get the same amount of motion. This cape isn't really gonna get in the way, and that shoulder pad goes up with it as well. Of course, you get a full rotation. There is a swivel at the elbow because it is a single jointed elbow, which I think Boba was also a single jointed elbow also. So you're gonna get 90 degrees on there. So that's it. So there to there, and that is it. There is a wrist swivel and a hinge. Now the right hand, has the opposite hinge, so it has the roll of the dice motion, whereas this one is the standard hinge. Okay, now as far as the torso, so it is a diaphragm joint, so no ab crunch. So the way you, you can get, you know, the pivot this way, pivot that way, front is not gonna be a whole lot. I mean, that's, that's where I'm getting it in the front, so that's not bending down too much. A little bit more so going back, but you know, you get that fluid motion in there. There is no waist swivel to the guy, so that's why you get that diaphragm joint. So you can get good range of motion in there though. Legs go out this far apart. The belt pieces are pretty soft so they can move with the legs. So legs go that far apart. Can kick up that much. This armor piece really gets in the way there at the hip, so that's why you can't kick up any more forward. Does go back a tiny, tiny bit. There is an upper thigh cut in there behind that armor piece. And we do get a double jointed knee, but a very uh, ugly looking joint. I mean, look at how that looks because of this funky knee pad that they that he has on that one. This one's a different knee pad, so that one looks like a, a little bit more of a natural knee pad, even though it's kind of flat. Um, knee cap, I mean. There is no boot swivel, foot hinges all the way down, hinges up fair amount and then of course ankle pivot but you know again ankles and boots are different colors so it's kind of funky so there is his articulation so you guys let me know down in the comments below is that articulation normal for black series like the neck peg or is that something new with this figure i'm kind of curious now let's see how he looks next to boba okay so looking at him next to the boba and I, I looked over both um, figures nothing is reused so everything is new um, so you can see, obviously, the, the inspiration in the Mandalorian armor um, with Boba Fett. Now, I think that's something that's with all Mandalorians and not something where they're just ripping off, um, you know, Boba Fett. That's something, I think, known in the Star Wars canon for Mandalorians. Uh, but again, I'm not the Star Wars expert. You guys can tell me differently. Um, I don't, I couldn't tell you for sure, but you can clearly see the inspiration um, throughout, even with such things as like this knee pad is very similar to Boba Fett. This one's very different, but this one is very similar to Boba Fett. Um, you know, the pouches, the armor design, and of course the T visor and helmet. Um, weapons are different, other than, you know, he's got one short blaster and then one uh, long barrel blaster. Um, but other than that, there's really nothing, there's nothing that's the same, just a lot of inspiration um, in this figure. Showing the blaster, it fits perfectly into his right hand with the finger going into the trigger, so that works out quite well. I was kind of, kind of have to work it to kind of get it in place. Left hand does not have a trigger finger, so it would be kind of funky. I mean, he can hold it and it's kind of loose, but you know, it's not the same. So I'm trying to figure out how he can hold the long uh, barrel blaster that he has. Um, and one thing that I discovered is that the forearms also spin in addition to that, um, to the elbow. So there's the added articulation there in the forearms. Um, and I can't seem to figure out how he's gonna hold this because how does that trigger? I was thinking, you know, oh, he's just gonna hold it this way, but I can't get it in there to where he can actually hold it. And I, you can kind of see it kind of, some of the paint kind of scuffed off onto that handle there. But I can't seem to get him to hold this um, in the right way of how it should be. So I'm gonna play with it a little bit more and see if I can figure that out. Okay, so really this is the only thing that I kind of came up with. This finger just goes into the trigger um, and then the way the shape of this handle kind of rests into his shoulder a little bit. Kind of holds it in place if you kind of wedge it in with that those, those shoulder pads. Um, he can kind of hold it. Otherwise, I really can't figure it out. Um, you guys can let me know 
down in the comments below if you have the figure and you guys figure out a way to do it because uh, I'm just not I have no idea but anyway um, sorry wish I could be more helpful on that I'm just can't figure out how he can hold it properly okay and there is my review now there is going to be another version of this figure the carbonized graphite um, Target exclusive that'll be out on Triple Force Friday October the 4th um, so that one looks pretty awesome there's some deco differences same old same accessories it's just that there's going to be some bronze more bronzy metallic color the box is different and then it has a five dollar upcharge so it's going to be like $24.99 for that figure does look really good um, but I think this is going to be the hard to find figure on Triple Force Friday this is probably the one that everybody's going to want because there's a lot of excitement surrounding the Mandalorian TV show on Disney Plus that will be debuting at launch of Disney Plus on November 12th so um, you guys let me know down in the comments below are you excited for the show have you pre-ordered Disney Plus or are you going to even get Disney Plus um, I'm curious let me know down in the comments below if you guys like the video please hit that thumbs up button subscribe if you haven't already already done so and as always thank you for watching